Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my channel if it's your first time coming across it. Share the videos and leave a comment for the videos. Alright, so the question we're going to solve here, it falls under dynamics, which is static equilibrium specifically as a subtopic. So it goes like this. A bag of cement, 50 kg, hangs from three wires as suggested in the figure below. Two of the wires makes angles, that is theta 1, 60 degrees, and theta 2, 30 degrees with the horizontal. If the system is in equilibrium, find the tension, which is T1, T2, T3 in the wires. Okay, so this is the diagram we are talking about. We know that this is our angle, that is our angle, and this is T1, T2, and T3. Now, if something is at equilibrium, what actually are you supposed to understand from that same uh, principle or rather from that same concept? We have two conditions that makes a lot of things to be at equilibrium. One, the first thing which can make something to be at equilibrium is when the summation of all the external forces, they are balanced, they are equal to zero. Secondly, it's when the anticlockwise moments must be equal to clockwise moments. Definitely, you'll find that you are going to have something which is going to be at equilibrium. In such a diagram, how can you say, say this thing is at equilibrium by noting out the external forces? How can you say this thing is at equilibrium by taking out the external forces? Here, what I'm going to do, look at what you have. We have the, the angles. Meaning that here, what we are going to have, the principles of vectors are going to apply in such a way that you need to know what is going to make the tensions to be at equilibrium in reference to this, that, that, and the back. So I'm going to illustrate everything here separately. I'm going to separate and you draw these as isolated systems. We are going to write this in a form of isolated system. All right, so let me try to redraw this. I want to redraw this. So I know that we have this, we have that, we have this. We have a bag of cement here. So this bag of cement is connected to a certain tension and our thing now is going to be like this we have t1 i mean t3 here we have my t1 i have my t2 somewhere there but be careful because t1 is raised at an angle of theta 1 and t2 is raised at an angle of theta 2 okay now, just from here, what are you supposed to do for you to easily understand what is happening at this instant of time? Remember, here we can use two methods. We can use what we call Lamy's theorem, or we can use the system of isolating this by writing their external forces in reference to what you have. Okay, we'll try to proceed. So what we are going to have, I'll try to use the first method whereby I'll isolate this into the forces the way they are going to do it, they are going to be arranged. So remember, here there is the connection of three tensions. We have this one, we have that one, we also have that one. So just from here, we are going to have something like this. Something like that. Then we are going to have something like this. So what you have to be understanding always, for you to get T3, tension number three always, T3 has to be equal to the weight of the cement. T3 has to be equal to the weight of the cement. So we understand to say, how do you uh, find the weight of cement? We are going to find that mostly if you put something here, its weight has to be pointing in this given direction, which is mg. Meaning that T3, T3 has to be equal to Mg. So this, the mass of the bag of the cement, they are saying it has to be 50 kgs. 
that's what I'm going to write where there is mass. I'll say 50 multiplied by 9.8, which is the acceleration due to gravity. We are going to punch this on the calculator. I'll say 50, sorry, 50 pi by 9.8. We are getting the tension, which is T3, as 490 newtons. You are done with the first part. I'll come to the second part, whereby I need to calculate for the T2 and T3. How would you understand something from this given point? What we are going to do here, I'll divide this. I'll put a demarcation here and also a demarcation on top. All right. So since we have a, a, an angle here, which is 30 degrees, we also have an angle here, which is 60 degrees. Meaning that if you use a simple understanding, you try to isolate this. We are going to have a certain diagram which is going to look like this now. We are going to have this for T1. So T1, look at this angle. We have a Z-like thing here. Meaning that if you have 60 degrees here, even somewhere there, you are going to have what? 60 degrees. So I'll do like this. I'll draw this line which is starting from here up somewhere there. We are going to have a skisty degrees. Remember tension is a force meaning that it can also have a concept of vectors. What am I supposed to do at this instant of time? I'm going to resolve T1 into its components. We are going to have a component looking this direction. The other component is going to face in that given direction. So if I want to resolve this tension, we are going to have T1 cos skist here. We also have T1 sin skist somewhere there. All right. I'll come to this one. I'll do likewise. This one, it must also be raised at an angle like this, which is T2. So since we have 30 degrees, which is made somewhere here, You'll find that even here you are going to have what 30 degrees or so. So what are you supposed to do at this instant of time? We are going to have 30 degrees somewhere here. Then I have to resolve T2 into its components. Remember it is making the object move in that given direction. It is almost pulling the object in that given direction. Hence we are going to have this component and the other component is going to first in this given direction. So we are going to have T2 sine 30, and then T1, sorry, T2 cos 30. Get back a bit to what I said in the beginning. Do you still remember what I told you to say? What are the two conditions that can make a system to be at equilibrium? It simply means the summation of all the external forces must be balanced. That actually simply means we only have two directions for external forces. We are going to have the summation of forces in X. They are supposed to be balanced, meaning that they're going to be equated to zero. And also the summation of forces in Y, we must get a zero. What does it mean? Here, if you check, meaning that somewhere here, we are going to have T, which is T2 cos 30. Somewhere here, we are going to have T1 so these two forces, this and that, they are going to be balanced. And how are you going to write them? You are going to say this force must be equal to that. Here in the middle, that's where we have two components. These components, I mean this and that. But if you check, we have another force which is almost making this one move downwards, which is the tension. It is almost pulling the entire thing to move downwards. So meaning that the two components that are moving upwards, they are going to be balanced with the downward thing, depending on the y axis. Meaning that where there is x part, what I'm going to do, I'll say, the force which is moving towards the positive side has to be equal to the one which is moving to the negative side. So we are going to have T2 cos 30. It has to be equal to T1 
cause schisting on the part of the horizontal forces. This becomes my first expression. If I come to this part, you find that the summation of the upward forces must be equal to the downward force. So in this case, the downward force has to be that one. We are going to say T1 sine schisti plus T2 cos, sorry, sine 30, quit everything to T3. Alright, let's try to finish this. We try to now uh, to, to finish this. Here, what are you going to do? Remember, I want to calculate for T3, T2, and T1. What am I supposed to do if I want to calculate for those? We are going to understand it fully to say T1 sine schisti plus T2, sorry, sine 30. It has to be equated to T3, which is 490 newtons. The moment you come here, we are going to have two equations now. The equation which you look at here and the equation which we are from getting somewhere here. What are you supposed to do for you to find either of the two? I'm going to make either T2 here the subject of the formula or that one. Let's try to make T2 the subject of the formula. What I'm going to get here, I'll replace where there is T2 here to find the value of T1. All right, so we are going to have, if you make T2 the subject, meaning that you are dividing throughout by what? Cos 30 degrees. So I'll have T1 cos 50. You divide this by cos 30, meaning that T2 is going to be equal to what answer can you get if you say cos is kissed divided by cos 30? We are going to have something like this. Say cos is 60 divided by cos 30. We are getting 0 0.577. Meaning that if you multiply 0 0.577, you have to write it like this. We are going to have 0 0.577 T1, just like that. All right, we try to proceed, meaning that we have, we've made T2 the subject of the formula. To avoid confusion, let's try to make these have numbers also instead of uh, sin schisti and sin 30. So what I'm going to do, I'll say, what answer are you supposed to get the moment you say sin schisti? We are getting 0 0.66, meaning that where there is this part, I'm going to write 0. 866 T1 plus I'll come to this other one. If you say cos, I mean sine 30. Sine 30, we understand that it has to give us 0 0.5. So we are going to have 0 0.5 T2, which is going to be equal to 490. Something like this. Meaning that where there is T2 here, you have to replace with what you are from getting somewhere here. So I'm going to get this and replace where there is T2 for me to calculate for T1. What we are going to have now, we're going to have 0 0.866 T1 plus 0 0.5. Where there is T2, I'll replace it with 0 0.577 T1. I'll close. Then I'll say equal to 490 newtons. So we are going to deal with this expression like the way it is. Let me try to change the page. All right. I'll copy down the expression which is uh, written like this. 0 0.866 that is T1 plus 0 0.5 open 0 0.577 T1 equal to 490 newtons, 480, sorry, 490 newtons. Where we are here, what are we supposed to do? What we are going to do here is very simple. I will multiply this by what is inside the brackets. So we are going to have 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.577, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0
we are getting 0 0.2885 meaning that i'm going to write this like this 0 0.8665 T1 plus 0 0.2885 T1 equal to 490 newtons. So the moment you add 0 0.2885 T1 plus this other one, you have to get something which is going to have a common thing here, which is T1. So here I haven't removed this, I'll just say plus 0 0.866 and we are getting 1.5 sorry 1.1545 t1 so we are going to have 1.5 so 1.1545 t1 which have to equate to 490 like that then what are we supposed to do here? You have to divide by 1.1545, divide this again by 1.1545, and I'll cancel this. I'll say T, which is T1, has to be equal to, remember we are trying to calculate for T1 first. Then the answer I'm from getting here, what I'm going to do, I'll say 490 divided by the answer, and we are getting the value of T1 as 424.4 newtons, which is just one and the same like 424 newtons. All right. If you proceed, you understand it fully to say, just try to get back a bit to what you got. We are having a certain expression here, which is T2 is equal to 0.577 t1 here where there is t1 you can replace and you'll be able to find the value of t2 so t2 has to be equal to 0 0.577 where there is t1 i was saying 424 something like this if you plug in everything 0 0.577 multiplied by 424 we are getting the value of this one as 244.6 which is just one and the same as t2 can also be written as 245 newtons this is how we do calculate for the tension one tension two tension three using the first method of components with the principle of vectors Remember the conditions, the summation of forces has to be balanced. The summation of forces in X, they're supposed to be balanced. The force which is moving in the X axis towards the negative, you must get it as a negative force. The one moving to the right hand side, a positive. Definitely, if you say summation of forces in X, giving you zero, what actually it means, you are going to have something which is going to be a balanced thing meaning that the force pointing to the left-hand side must be equal to the one pointing to the right-hand side. That was the first method. If you want to use what we call Lamy's theorem, the moment you want to use what we call Lamy's theorem, we understand to say anything which is in a form of a triangle. If you have five here, you have four here, you have three here, the angle which is here 20, you have this one maybe 30, uh, this that you have 130 degrees somewhere here. How do you deal with that triangle the moment you want to find something which is missing? Maybe if this one is missing, it is not there. Definitely, we have to use what we call sine rule. We normally use a sine rule. How do you use sine rule? I will label these parts as, I'll say A, B, and C. Meaning that using sine rule, we're going to have A over the opposite angle to this has to be the one which is here. And I'll label it with capital letter A, this one capital letter C, this one capital letter B, which is the opposite to this has to be that, the opposite to that has to be this one. So here we are going to have sign A, I'll say equal to, uh, if you come to the other one which is B, B over 
sine each angle, the opposite angle has to be this one. You see equal to C has to be divided by the opposite angle, which is C. This concept also applies to static equilibrium. It also applies to static equilibrium. Let's try to get back to the diagram itself. We try to get back to the diagram how it was drawn. So we are going to find that this diagram. Let me try to draw it on a, a smooth edge. So our diagram looks like this. We have something like this. So I'll say T3, T1, is it T1 or T2? This has to be T2, T1. So they are saying this is 30 degrees, that is 60 degrees. All right, remember we are using what we call Lamy's theorem. Lamy's Still, we are going to get the same answers. We are going to get the same answers. So here, this applies in a different way. We don't use like sides. We are using tensions. What are we supposed to do? What we are going to understand here, dear friends, the opposite angle to this has to be secured. The opposite angle to this has to be the one which is found. Sorry, 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 sorry. We don't want to start making mistakes. Since we are using tensions, the opposite angle to this is going to be the angle that is going to be made somewhere here, right? Sorry for that mistake. The opposite angle to this tension, which is T3, T2. The opposite angle to this has to be the angle which is going to be made somewhere here. The opposite angle to T1 has to be the angle we are going to have somewhere here. The opposite angle to this has to be the angle which is going to be made somewhere here. Now the question is, how do you get the same angles? That is the only thing you have to understand the most for you to get this question correctly using Lamy's theorem. So I'll also do likewise. I'll divide this into that position, meaning that I understand that this is 30 degrees also. This one is 16 degrees. So since this is a straight line for tension, meaning that we are going to have 90 here and 90 somewhere there. How do you get the angle in the middle? You say 60 plus 30, you subtract the total to, I mean from 180, you find that its angle here has to be 90 degrees. To get the angle which is the opposite to T1, what are we supposed to do? I'll say the angle for T1 has to be equal to, we are going to add 30 degrees, which is here, plus 90, and I'll get 120 degrees. Then for T1, sorry, for T2, I'll do likewise. Its opposite angle has to be the angle made here. We are going to have 90 plus 60, and it gives us 150 degrees. Then this one, which is for T3, we are having an angle of 90 degrees. So these are opposite angles, meaning that everything has been simplified as simple as that. But you have to be very careful because I'm saying T3 has to be the A, has to be the tension which is supported by the weight, meaning that still for T3, we are going to have something like mass multiplied by gravity, which I remember it gave us 400 and 90 newtons if you play uh, you plug in the values given all right we proceed if you come to everything now you want to use Lamy's theorem what we are going to do i'll say t1 over sine the opposite angle to t1 which is 120 equal to t2 over sine the opposite to that same tension 150 equal to T3 over sine the opposite angle to that same tension, which is 90 degrees.
Here you have to start with the part which is having a false already. So I'll start with this part. Then once I get the answers, I'll come to this part. If you want, you can even equate this direct to that. Still, we are going to find the value of T1. So if we start with this one, I'll say T1 over sine 120, you have to equate this to T3 over sine 90. Do you still remember what T3 is? Yes, I do. T1 has to be divided by... In short, to simplify everything, let's try to write it like this. I'll say multiply. Then just multiply this and that. This remains like the way it is. We are going to have T... T1, which is going to be T3 sine 120 over 90 sine before that. So what are we going to have here? We need to understand to say T1 is equal to, this one is 490 sine 120, you divide by sine 90. Meaning that my T1 is going to be equal to T1 at this instant is going to be equal to, we are going to say 490 sine 120, we are getting that, you divide this by sine 90, what answer am I getting? I'm getting 424 newtons, so we are getting 424 newtons for T1, I'll come to T2. I can also relate it to, uh, to either of the two, still we are going to get the same answer. I can try to relate it to either of the two, and definitely still I'm going to get the same answer. So I'll say T2 over sine 150 equal to T3 over sine 90. So remember I want to get this, meaning that I'll multiply like this, I'll have T2 equal to like this. So just to multiply this by what is on top, you will get T3 sine 150 over sine 90. Meaning that T2 has to be equal to 490 sine 150 over sine 90. Definitely T2 is going to be equal to, if you plug in everything at this instant, you say 490 sine 150 divided by sine 90, we are getting 245 to be our tension number 2, 245 newtons. You can use whichever method, either for components or using this Lamy's theorem where you have to identify the opposite angles for every tension. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much. Try to subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment on every video you have come across according to, uh, to chorus sequential tutorials. Thank you once more.